This is lesson 87, VHDL example 58. And in this example, we'll see how to scroll a message on the seven segment display. We're going to take our X7 seg B, you remember that we did some time ago, and we're going to modify it. And you remember that we had a two bit counter that takes the input X, 16 bit input, representing the four hex digits displayed on the seven segment display and we multiplex those to get this digit we go through hex seven seg out to a to g and then a n we have this a n code which selects the digits and we multiplex the digits we're going to modify hex seven seg to become a hex seven seg message where we're going to change d to display a dash and f is going to display a blank we're going to display a a phone number and scroll it across the seven segment display. So we're only going to need the digits 0 to 9. You remember that X 15 to 0 is what gets displayed on the seven segment display. So the upper four bits are X 15 to 12, then the next digit is X 11 to 8, and then the next digit is X 7 to 4, and the rightmost digit is x3 to 0. So if we have say a hex 2, 4, 8, and a dash coming into the 16-bit x, then what will, be, what will be displayed on the seven segment display will be 2, 4, 8, dash. If we want to scroll that, what we do is we pre-store a phone number. We'll have 248-656- and then the rest of it. And for blanks we'll put in an F. So to scroll it we just need to have the 4 move up to where the 2 was, the 8 move up to where the 4 was, the dash move up to where the 8 was, and the 6 move up to where the dash. And at that point what would be displayed on the seven segment display would be 4, 8, dash, 6. So if we just wait a little bit and then sh shift it again, it'll look as if this entire message gets scrolled across the seven segment display. Of course, the 2 will wrap around and we'll put in where the F was here, and then this will continually scroll endlessly. Now, another trick we're going to do is we'll use a 64-bit array to store this entire message. So we'll have a message array, say 0 to 63, then message array 0 to 3 would contain the 2, message array 4 to 7, the 4, and so forth. So let's see how we can write a VHDL program to do this. We'll call it shift array, and we'll have a clock, clear, and x in, so the x out. So this x is going to be uh, a 15 down to 0, and this shift array will be this shift array which is going to shift. So we'll, dis we'll define a signal message array 0 to 63. That's going to contain the entire message. And to write the message, we'll just make a constant. We'll call it phone number, standard logic vector 63 down to 0. And this will be 248, D is going to display a dash, 656 dash, 1490, and then four blanks, FFFF. So this hex number, if you want, will be the message which will contain 63 bit, 64 bit, 63 down to 0. So then the process clock in clear, if clear equals 1, we want the message array to contain phone number. So this pre stores this phone number in message array. And then on the rising edge of the clock, now this will be a relatively slow clock, maybe say a 3 hertz clock. This, this will be the rate at which each message gets shifted across the seven segment display. On the rising edge of that clock, message array 0 to 59, 0 to 59 takes it to here, 
we'll get message 4 to 63. Here's 4 to 63. In other words, everything gets shifted 4 bits or gets shifted up one digit. And then message array 60 to 63, this last one, gets message array 0 to 3, that is this 2 gets wrapped around and gets put in there. And then the output x is just message array 0 to 15. So that should do it. Let's simulate that and see what happens. Here's the clock and here's the output x and you see it starts out here's the 4 8 dash we've already shifted one in 6 then on the next rising edge of the clock the 8 d 6 gets moved over and a 5 gets shifted in Then the next rising edge the d 6 5 is shifted over and a 6 gets shifted in and then the 6 5 6 with another dash and so forth until you get the f f f f and then it starts over again 248 dash wraps around. So it looks like that works. So we should be able to make an X7 seg message. We'll modify this. This is our old X7 seg or X7 seg B. Uh, really it's the X7 seg we're going to modify. So here's the X in 15 down to 0. C clock, that's our 190 hertz clock and then we have the A to G and A in and decimal point out. So the decimal point to 1, A enable is 1, 1, 1, 1, so all the digits are on. Here's our quad 4 to 1 mux. This is exactly what we had in X7 seg. Here is what we're going to modify now. This used to be hex 7 seg and everything is the same we're just going to modify the code for D. We'll make a dash by just turning on segment G, you see. And then for F, which is when others, we'll make a blank by turning off all the digits. So that's the only change we're going to make here. AN code is the same. Our 2-bit counter is the same. So let's do a top-level design for this we'll call it scroll top M clock coming in button we only need button 3 so we have to make 3 down to 3 and then we have A to G A in and decimal point out here's the component for clock div we will uh, change the clock 48 to clock 3 to slow down the message so we'll make this a clock 3 and um, Here's our shift array component. Here's the component for our new X7 seg message. Then we have signals clear, clock 190, clock 3. Our X 15 down to 0, clears button 3. Here's the port map for clock div. So we're bringing out clock 190 and clock 3, our 3 hertz clock. Here's the shift array port map clock is now clock 3, the 3 hertz, and here is the port map for X7 seg message. So you should download this top level design into your FPGA board and when you run it you should see the telephone number scroll across the 7 segment display.